Hello, happy happies. I'm Jesse McCready, I'm with Animodule, and check out my modules at animodule.com. This is a synth-related machining video, and so I'll post it on my Animodule channel. I, I know you've all been missing me, because it's been a minute since I posted a video. <laughs> I got a request from one Mr. Eric Archer to machine some anvils for punches he's using to fabricate synth front panels and housing and various synthesizer devices. So Eric Archer is the designer and creator of the Grendel Drone Commander, the Grendel Foreman Filter, the Grendel Grenadier, and the Hydronium. They're all awesome. Check them all out on rarewaves.net. I put a, a link down in the description. He's also the creator of the Mini Space Rocker, which, without which, there would be no Ada module. That's what I learned to read schematics on. By re uh, you know, I was banging my head on them, trying to read them, and. I'd read this, look at this, I should say I'd look at this schematic and that schematic and I, I couldn't read them. It was like Greek. You know, I'd fall asleep with with my little transistor book under my pillow and it, none of it was making sense. I came across Eric Archer's mini space rocker at uh, ericarcher.net and he thoughtfully laid out the breadboard and the schematic and photos of the breadboard and a excellent descriptions and I was able to put the breadboard together and piece it together and go back and forth between the breadboard drawing and the schematic and after that schematic started to make sense to me I was able to follow them a little bit and the, the rest is history. I not. Well, <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> but so it's awesome that I'm able to make something for him. But check it out. Check them out at rarewaves.net and ericarcher.net. And here we go with this anvil. i start by facing it off. This is a piece of pre hardened 4140. It's a lovely piece of steel. Away we go. All right, got her faced off. I'm gonna give her a little skim. And just, oh. Chew it up. Not sure if this is the right tool for this. This may have too wide a radius. We'll find out. Here we go, I'm going to mark this, I like to mark two inches on here, I can't get my calipers in close enough without knocking into the chuck jaws. So this is a great use of hermaphroditic calipers, oh, oh, alright, yeah. 
you could use you could use a marking gauge but I don't have one so I have these and they're handy I'm trying to arrange my arms so you can see that that may or may not happen but there we go we got market nonetheless Another mark that I can reach with the calipers. There we go, my hands in the way still. Okay, perfect. Nope. Those are my good marking calipers. Don't chop them. I'm experimenting with different tools and of course speeds and feeds you get a nice finish while I'm hogging material this is an eighth inch cut on this 4140 pre hard I used a sharp tool before let's see let's show you can you see that this one has a real positive rake on it But it doesn't leave so nice a finish. Yeah, that's that's a lot of material for this lathe. It's a South Bend 14 and a half. It runs out. Of, I gotta run it in back gear too, so it doesn't run out of juice. Mostly the belt will slip more than anything else. I mean, there's plenty of juice in the motor, but so the belt doesn't slip. Well, with the sharp one, let's see how we do on this one. That's a lot of chatter. It's obviously uh, you know, the piece is warm, but it's not smoking hot like uh, like these pieces are pulling off. That dark blue shouldn't be. Uh, you don't want it that dark when you use cutting with high speed steel. I'm gonna adjust my angle. I think it needs more of a positive rate to be honest with it. You see on the finish, it's lots of chatter. Uh, how we do here? Let's give her another go. I think I just need to slow it down some. I think it just needs to slow down some. I'm going to put another tool in there. Come on, slow on down. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay. I slowed the feed down. I'm not slowing the speed down.
don't know if you can see these chips, but these are, ooh, that's still not cold. These are the color that you want. These are, uh, you know, tan, they're golden. They're toast colored. That's the color you want for high speed steel. You hear no chatter in there. It's still a fog finish, so. Let's not say experiment failed, but to be continued. And I got another cut. What I gotta take a, gotta take another 200 thou off. Let's give her a look, see. All right, it's almost exactly 200 thou. Now that would get me to finish depth, and I'm just about positive that I cannot get a nice finish on a hog and cut like this. I mean, I probably could, I just don't know how. So <laughs> We'll put her, we'll set it to 80 thou, 90 thou, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and that leaves 20 thou left cut to get a nice finish. Let's try less rake. If you can see that, it's not nearly as fugly a cut as the last one. It's not pretty. You're not going to see it on my Instagram page, but it's getting better. Alright, I got to change the angle around. I want to make the finish cut. I got to cut an angle on the shoulder and I make the finish cut on the same angle so I can feather them in together. All right, got the compound set to 30 degrees. Just gonna rough out this shoulder a little bit.
Oh, you gotta do the cutout for the front. Here's the tool I use for that. I don't know if you can see that. Come on and focus. It's it's shaped like a cutoff tool, except the profile. It's a tree painting tool, essentially. And I'll just use it to cut a pocket in here. Oh yeah, I have a little harder time hearing me over here. You're right next to the motor. <laughs> if you can believe it, harder time hearing me. But here you go. Start messing around with it. I messed up the pocket. I didn't account that the tree painting tool was for it turning counterclockwise and it had the bottom scooped out for that. So meanwhile I'm cutting it up top. The bottom was scooping it out because it's it was spinning clockwise. Tricky me, right? <laughs> it's all right. I'll just turn the shoulder back a little more, and I'll I'll catch the end of that on the second operation. There's another good operation for these hermaphrodite calipers, right? Pull this back. I can't hardly scribe it with these. I mean, I could, but I get quite a bit of parallax error on that. So on a pull this up till it touches, then back it up just a hair. I guess I could use the compound and back it up precisely. Let's say I just don't want it rubbing. I set, I put the foot on the end here and put the scribe on the piece. I don't know if you can see that marking, but I'll move the tool post away. There you go. For this, uh, there you go, let's uh, focus. For this not critical mark, that'll get me there. Instead of fighting with with these guys.
second verse, same as the first. depth gauge I got is my calipers. I don't like relying on them for finish numbers but I think in this case it'll do the trick between that and the indicator I've got on the ways and I've got an expanding bore gauge so I can measure this with a micrometer. It's just deep enough to maybe get an accurate reading. It looks like it. All right. So this is the anvil for Mr. Ar Eric Archer. Check him out at rarewaves.net for the Grendel, the Drone Commander, the Foreman Filter, the Grenadier, so the Hydronium, Check out ericarcher.net for the mini space rocker. Plans for a TR-808 do-it-yourself. There's a whole wealth of information there. I'll tell you, that's where I learned to read schematics. And thank you for that. I still got to flip this around. Well, cut it, flip it around, do the second operation on the back to get the, the end. I may show you that, but probably not. If not... I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Anna Module. Check out my modules at AnnaModule.com.